In this lesson, we'll go through two examples where we learn how to find the matrix that diagonalizes another using our knowledge of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. The question reads, consider the matrix A shown below. Notice that it is a three by three matrix. We have to find a matrix P that diagonalizes A. That's our first task. To do this, they've given us a hint. They've told us the eigenvalues. It's two and three repeated. I know that because we have the two threes here. On top of that, they've given us this matrix, which is the row reduced echelon form. After we take this matrix, subtract it by the eigenvalue times its identity. And after that's done, substituting two and three into that gives you a matrix, which you then reduce down to these row reduced echelon form matrices. We need these matrices to help us come up with the matrix P. And here's how. Let's start by focusing on this one. The first column in this matrix doesn't have a leading one. So we can set, if we say that this column is x sub 1, we can set it as any parameter letter. Let's set it as t. If we set that as t and try to solve the equations found in this RREF matrix, we have in the first row, x sub 2 is equal to 0. And in the second row, we have x sub 3 is equal to 0. This one and this one corresponds to the coefficient which I haven't written. So our column vector, if we call it x, is equal to x sub 1, which has a coefficient of 1. So I'll place that there. x sub 2 is equal to 0. And x sub 3 is equal to 0 times t. This is called an eigenvector. And we'll need this eigenvector later on to materialize a matrix P. So that's when the eigenvalue is 2. What about when the eigenvalue is 3? Let me just put this aside. Now, if you have no knowledge of eigenvalues and eigenvectors, obviously this is going to be hard to understand. So make sure that you look back at our eigenvalue and eigenvector videos. They're really good, and they explain the process leading up to here. So now looking at this matrix, we have two columns without a leading one. This column has a leading one. That one doesn't, and neither does that. So we're going to have two parameters. I'm going to set x sub 2, since that column doesn't have a leading 1, as the parameter t. And I'll set x sub 3 as parameter r. Looking at the only row, we have x sub 1 plus 2 times x sub 3 is equal to 0. Substituting r into x sub 3, we get x sub 1 plus 2 times r is equal to 0. And now if I solve for x sub 1, I get x sub 1 is equal to negative 2r. So our matrix x will consist of t and r, and they will have their own individual column vectors. For this part, the first row will be negative 2. That's the coefficient here. There's no x sub 2, so I'll place 0. And we set x sub 3 as r, so it has a coefficient of 1. We place that there. That's another eigenvector that we just found. And now for t, if we refer back to this equation, the only equation that we can make, there's no relationship between that and x sub 2. So unfortunately, x sub 1 is 0, x sub 3 is 0, and x sub 2 has the coefficient of 1, so we place that there. We have 1, 2, and 3 eigenvectors. Now, how does that relate to P? If we combine them all together, we will create a matrix P. And in order of the eigenvalues, for when the eigenvalue was 2, we got this. So I'll write that first. 1, 0, and 0 corresponds to this part. For x sub 2, we use T, so we look at 0. 1 and 0. And for x sub 3, we set it as r, and that happened to be negative 2, 0, and 1. So that right there, this P matrix is what diagonalizes A. The next question reads, what does D is equal to the inverse of P times A times P work out to? So we've done a video on this already about diagonalizing a matrix. I'll just do it really quickly for you. Now that I've made some room, we have to find the inverse of this matrix. To find the inverse of a 3x3 three three matrix, you have to find its determinant, and then transpose the matrix by 
changing the rows with the columns. Then you multiply the determinant by each of the elements in that transposed matrix. So if I transpose this matrix right now, I will get 1, 0, negative 2, 0, 1, and 0, 0, 0, and 1. If I multiply this now by its determinant, I'll skip showing you how to find the determinant. The determinant of this matrix happens to be 1. So multiplying each of these by 1 gives you the exact same thing. We multiply this now by A, and we multiply it again by 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, negative 2, 0, 1. The answer to this is D, and it happens to be 2, 0, 0, 0, 3, 0, and 0, 0, 3. That's the answer to question number one. Let's move on to question number two. If a 2 by 2 matrix A is known to have eigenvalues 3 and negative 2, and the eigenvectors are negative 1 and 3 and 0 and 8, respectively, then is A diagonalizable? If so, find P and D. This is really good. They give us the eigenvectors so we don't have to worry about all this stuff, all this extra stuff that we did up here. And it's in respective order. So if the eigenvalues was 3 and negative 2, then our p will be negative 1, 3. That's the first column. The second column will be 0 and 8. If you wanted to also, you could have done it in the reverse order, like 0 and, and 8 at the bottom, negative 1 and 3. But then your diagonal, so in this particular case, would be 3 and negative 2. That's D. And here it would be D is equal to negative 2 and 3 and 0. A is diagonalizable because we have two linear independent eigenvectors. On the contrary, if there are not enough linear independent eigenvectors, then it's not diagonalizable. So if it was 3 by 3 and we only had two eigenvectors, then it wouldn't work in that case. In this case, it does. And there you have it. A few examples on how to find the matrix that diagonalizes another using eigenvalues and vectors.